We make thousands of choices each day, what to wear, what to eat, where to park. New research shows making too many decisions can be exhausting. But does it lead you to making bad choices? Taylor Killo reports. Mary Ellen Decoff spends most of her days making decisions about other people's lives. As a Monroe County Circuit Court judge, she reviews cases filed in her court and sets hearings. She decides who goes to jail and for how long. I have a criminal docket, so I preside over cases, misdemeanors, felonies, traffic infractions. I also preside over the Monroe County Drug Treatment Court. Each case includes dozens of factors, so some days she makes hundreds of decisions, even before lunch. It depends upon what kind of day it is. If it's a misdemeanor pretrial day, I could hear um, 40 to 60 cases. If it's a felony pretrial day, I could hear probably 30 or 30 to 40 cases if they're pretrials. A study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences looked at the decisions of judges in Israel when considering parole. It found that the more decisions the judges had made, the more likely they were to keep the status quo, meaning they were less likely to grant parole. This is called decision fatigue, the idea that cognitive resources become depleted if someone makes too many decisions. And two Indiana University professors say there is plenty of scientific evidence to support the idea of decision fatigue and its potential consequences. Peter Todd and Ed Hurt are professors in psychological and brain sciences. Hurt says the point where someone is likely to experience decision fatigue depends on how they think about decision making. If someone enjoys deciding what to watch on TV, but tires of deciding what to eat, they are less likely to become fatigued while channel surfing. It does create a situation where it becomes very difficult to maintain a certain level of, of uh, expertise in, in the way you approach subsequent kind of tasks. And usually you see some undermining of people's performance. The Israel Judge study also includes data on the judge's eating habits and suggests blood glucose levels may affect the decisions made, something Todd concludes in his research on food and the brain. I present the possibility that the behavior of the judges is related to how long it's been since they've eaten. That's what the common uh, interpretation in, in the press has been. And though Judge Dekoff admits growing tired of making decisions. There'll be times when my husband will say, what do you want for dinner? Or, you know, where, where do you want to go for dinner? And I'll say, I've been making decisions all day. I don't, I, I, you decide. She says the study is oversimplified because it does not consider all the factors in a judge's decision. For instance, you could have a case where you have four defendants. It could, they could all be charged with the exact same criminal offense. You could have one at 9, one at 11, one at 130, one at 4. Are you going to get different sentences and results? Dekoff says yes, but not because of how many decisions she's already made. Because you're talking about four different individuals, four different, um, four different criminal histories, whether or not there were victims, whether or not there were um, aggravating factors, mitigating factors, the age of the defendant, um, where the crime took place, how the crime took place. The researchers point out decision fatigue doesn't necessarily mean making bad choices. You just may be more likely to fall back on default decisions. Todd says default decisions and decision fatigue are related and can have negative consequences when making more complicated choices. The default decisions will happen more in situations where uh, there's time pressure uh, or where, for instance, you have, have gotten tired and don't have the, uh, necessarily the, the mental energy to, to put into thinking more deeply about the, the situation. Judge Dekoff says she makes sure to take breaks throughout her day to stay fresh. Although sometimes I wish I did have a crystal ball as far as being able to predict. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, especially if you're going to put somebody on probation or let somebody out of jail, that you had a crystal ball that would say, it's fine, they'll be fine, everybody's safe, the community will be safe. That, that would be helpful. Researchers say there isn't one specific way to battle decision fatigue. It's different for everyone, so they advise people to be aware of when they need to take breaks and do what makes them feel most refreshed.